well, the title is Skip to, to Big Bang. When I was uh, invited uh, to this conference and appreciate the presentation, I tried to collect my ideas what to say, mm -hmm. express my gratitude to them. So, in some sense, this is not a title. There should be another subtitle. Like, uh, how Alberto's ideas in some sporadic but very good personalization of the Thank you, Alberto. Thank you. So, in fact, uh, uh, I met Alberto when I was very young. Probably too young to appreciate it. But uh, <laughs> I was a bit scared of meeting such an uh, uh, important mathematician. Uh, uh, but uh, we had a, a friend in common, mm -hmm. Alvaro. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In Chile, he was a friend not only of Alberto but family of Alberto, and he insisted me to have to go and talk to him. I was scared because I, well, I didn't have any background in mathematics. I was undergraduate in business, um, but so my friend insisted and we went to ICTP and I met this very energetic man with a lot of ideas, and there were some rumors that he was qualified to prove them. Conjecture, so I was, you know. <laughs> and uh, as, as you all know, uh, he started talking about mathematics. I had very bad knowledge in mathematics. Um, at a certain point, I remember that he asked me, What is for you a compass number? <laughs> um, <laughs> and I said, well, you know, <laughs> I, well, I didn't have any, many applications of this field, which I knew. <laughs> Um, and I probably, I didn't remember the, the, the answer, it was not wrong, let's say, I said something like, well, it's the algebra of the or something related to equations. And, but he, I remember, I perfectly remember his reaction, I said, well, okay, I did in this way, if you miss all the units. <laughs> <laughs> so the next year I took a course, <laughs> sorry, sorry about this one. Introduction. So the next year, I took a course in complex analysis, and I started appreciating the beauties. Uh, and by accident, I became a student of the same thing. At that time, I didn't know that they they knew each other. Mm -hmm. So, but I'm very happy and very grateful to both of them because, as they said, he was embraced by them. The Zen was embraced by Alberto, and I was embraced by Luciano. So in some sense, I could. Embrace well. So thank you very much. So when studying this basic stuff in complex analysis, at a certain point, uh, um, I noticed some invisible constraints uh, <coughs> which uh, has no counterparts in, in, in real analysis. And even if I had just a basic course in complex analysis, I could appreciate. I could see that this happens also in one part. And well, everybody familiar with this, so I don't want to, to say anything. But you see, uh, Schwarz Lehmann is an important tool in one of the complex variable analysis. Um, the information, which is some, somehow uh, uh, here, is considered important, but I consider it important also the second part. So if you have the information that, well, for instance, at one point, zero, which is fixed, the derivative is equal to one, the function is equal to the identity. So, <coughs> from studying a little bit more, everybody encountered the Schwarzschild lemma where the hypothesis of the existence of a point, fixed point inside the disk, is removed. But still, there is this fact. Okay. If quality holds in one or in two, then necessarily the function f is uh, holomorphic automorphic in this case. With these two simple results, one can uh, extend, well, one can find this important result, uh, known as the Wolf's lemma. What is also interesting um, is that all these famous results are known as lemmas, but in fact they are very important theories. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, this is uh, the first version uh, any student uh, learner course of the Schwarz boundary length. Um, so I just which wolf is that? Honestly, I don't know. 
Yes, you're right. There are so many. Uh, like Schwarz, exactly. But uh, well, what year is it? This should be the end of the 80s. The end of the 19th century. There is um, there is an analytical way to, to, to describe the same, okay? and uh, it uh, takes into consideration the analytic expression of oral samples. And this point, this unique point to find this lemma, will be called the work point that commonly regarded as a boundary fixed point. Mm -hmm. This is something which is often used in dynamics. So I study them, well, it's not, it's not just to study angular regions and to find non tangential limit using this angular region of boundary. And it is somehow natural to look at boundaries if they are. It's a boundary version of a uh, of say, for instance, the Cartan's lemma, the Cartan theorem. Uh, I collected here in this uh, theorem, Julia Wolfgang's Satori theorem, the information about the behavior of boundary behavior of the grid, uh, which takes into consideration also this boundary dimension coefficient. And then we have this result. If this limit is finite, if this is finite, essentially, then we have this limit exists, and the limit of the derivative, in the sense of non tangential limit, but not in the angular region, is also the limit of this somehow. Uh, this uh, incremental ratio of the boundary, and we have also the boundary here. So this is exactly the same. So in particular, this number is a positive real number when sigma is equal to tau. And without great efforts, you can actually prove that when tau is the walk uh, point, then you have that this number is in between zero and one. So, sorry. So I was looking for a result like the Cartan's theorem, but in a boundary version. <coughs> and then, I, I, well, I had some ideas, but I couldn't actually prove it. And the first result, will, which, um, in a sense, gives a, 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 an answer to my question, is the one which appeared in 1984 by Barnes and Franz. And this is their version of the theorem. Um, I have to say that, well, the, the theorem is, uh, the proof is not very long, but uh, it's not direct, so it goes through an integral presentation, then there's a contradiction to Hoffman, so it's not direct. But the, the authors of Burns and Clans, I mean, this is a quite surprising uh, uh, statement which is not found, which was not found in the literature, and then they use this lemma. <coughs> <coughs> in several complex variables. So they apply uh, Lamper function and use this lemma to have the same result. So what I try to function with the same Lamper function. Lamper? Lamper. Lamper is the projection. Okay. So using the Jotary complex. L-A-M. Lamper. Laszlo Lamper. He is in Purdue, right? Purdue mm -hmm. University. Yes. <coughs> so we started uh, looking at this um, results and the proofs of this result. Um, eventually, we met with the Taurazo, Roberto Taurazo. We found this, which we consider generalization of the this. Uh, so we are uh, considering two functions from the distance to the disk. We have two points. On the boundary, and uh, we have this condition here, this limit, and this condition here. Apparently, add some extra condition compared to the previous condition. Sorry, previous statement. Mm -hmm. Then, <coughs> if this limit, well, I'm sorry, we, we can prove that this is a non-positive number. But if uh, the if limit L is zero, then necessarily f is g, and well, this is if and only if. Why this condition appears? Well, it's a bit technical, but I want just to, to observe that this condition is somehow hidden in here, and it is, in fact, Wolf's lemma. So if you take as a G the identity, well, you have this for, for free. And you have only this. 
to express in hops on this. So here is the second meet, the second so occasional meeting. Tau used in the hypothesis. Pardon me? Is tau used in the hypothesis? Tau is here. No? No, the point of the boundary. Mm -hmm. um, and he questioned me many times. He was very, you know, interested in the subject. And so, in some sense, I, I felt very happy and said, "Well, you probably yeah. recognize me as a young undergraduate student." Of course, he yes. didn't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but he had recognized the Taurat. In fact, he was a senior advisor for his PhD thesis, uh, Professor Namiko, uh, Professor Namiko mm -hmm. But uh, in that occasion. I had the opportunity to talk to him a little bit um, and to appreciate also his uh, his personal qualities, not only his knowledge in mathematics. So, encouraged me to, to, to continue studying this. I actually tried to convince me that the techniques involved here could be extended also in several complex rules, but we fit. But it gave us very good uh, hints for. for Possible other uh, studies. Uh, I have to say uh, that condition four can be also rephrased using this any transformation from the disk to say uh, H plus like this. So, sorry, so this is I'm sorry, I'm a bit accustomed to use H for containing. Uh, <laughs> So these are the numbers we are considering. Um, now it's like this. Uh, Z, and condition four can be also written as near part of everything is greater or equal to near part of G. So this gives you some mm -hmm. geometric interpretation also of the condition. Mm -hmm. And in fact, uh, what we've done together with uh, uh, Roberto Torrado in some sense is the following to consider is uh, rational functions. Oh, sigma k is <coughs> sigma k boundary. A plus I B, a positive, say non negative, and uh, find condition on F. This plays the role of G in the condition, um, in, in the theorem, in such a way that we can say after considering conditions on, so we calculate the, the second derivative, the first derivative, second derivative, third derivative, mixture also together with the Schwarzen derivative, boundary factor, we put condition on the boundary coefficient, say, on the first, second, <coughs> third derivative of f to, to say that f is in fact not the identity but one of the rational factors. This was one of the ideas from my dad. The other one it was to introduce us to the notion of vanishing order. This was known in the literature. And in fact, there were many results in this, in this, uh, in this sense. So they were always there. The, the results are always in the um, and the same uh, kind of pattern, okay? So, hypothesis function from the disk into uh, the form of domain, say, like holomorphic vanishing order infinity at the point of the boundary plus additional assumption on the boundaries, okay? And then F is then necessarily F is gone. So, for instance, Bell, Lambert, uh, Alexander, especially Alexander, there are a lot of uh, um, very good results in this. What this suggests us to do is, uh, well, why don't you we, we take mind assumptions on the boundary, because the boundary could be very odd, okay? Mind assumptions, on sense, and reduce the, 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 the vanishing order, because in, in, 
the examples of the Burns of France, which was inspired this thing. <laughs> and this was I tried to do and I have some results with Serena Migliorini. Uh, and this, as I said, was the first mm -hmm. uh, part of my research in connection with the Grazia Hunt. And immediately after that, uh, Grazia Gentili came from, sorry, from uh, California with the, so, as he said, the bomb in his, mm -hmm. his, in his suitcase. <laughs> and we all started to look at this new definition of somehow generalization of holomorphic function and holomorphic uh, functions, yes, and, and mm -hmm. in the quaternion itself. Mm -hmm. So, but, well, I had a very, uh, say, poor uh, notion of how these uh, uh, hyper-complex uh, analysis was formed. So, uh, I have to remember that in 1994, at CISA, under the, so there was a, a conference in the uh, and one of the organizers were So one of uh, the students of Simon Salon, somehow, uh, I, was a, I was a student there, mm -hmm. because there was this, this conference I wanted to go there. So the, one of the students of Simon Salon actually introduced the basic fact about Hamilton and Donald's and at that time, uh, well, it, it was the first time I heard the, the story of you know, the Hamilton walking along the Grand Canal. Well, I believe, I believe it was kind of a legend, it was not an official. Mm -hmm. But then, uh, as you can imagine, uh, I discovered that the Quaternion calculus was something very hard to define. Mm -hmm. So this, uh, this is a part of a, a an introduction uh, letter by Maxwell. It appeared in 19, 1869. He, or in 1869, realized that quaternion calculus could be very important. But at that stage, the, the quaternion calculus was very poor. Mm -hmm. um, this uh, student of uh, Simon Solomon, in fact, uh, introduced the Hamilton numbers of quaternions using this diagram. You know, the diagram that told us was engraved on the stone. But, uh, but three years ago, I went to Ireland and I actually discovered this, the old story is true. There is uh, there's a plaque on this, uh, on this uh, bridge. Huh? And there is a, a precise date when all this happened. And uh, for a survey I, uh, with Catarina uh, Sopato, we also looked for some uh, historical information. There is a letter, that, actually two letters. By Sir William Howard, uh, Owen Hamilton, where, uh, in which they dis he described precisely what happened. So he was walking and going to one of these academic meetings with an astronomer, quite a sophisticated man, walking with his wife and thinking about the, his idea to extend the problem. So of listening to his wife and thinking about it. Well, <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is a good point. He was good. It is not, not reported the reaction of the wife. <laughs> <laughs> but we can all imagine. Okay. Well, he was you going, but anyway, she don't want this. Uh, what, what was uh, interesting is that he was going to one of uh, these academic meetings. So I think that like, everybody was very much interested in what he was going in this academic meeting, but he was thinking about anything. Exactly. risk was going. Um, at that time, he worked, uh, well, he, he already developed uh, calculus, vectorial calculus, very much. So I think that one of the symbols we normally use, like this one, the other one, is uh, due to Hamilton. Kind of, um, but he tried to, so he was obsessed with the idea of extending the product from R2 to R3. So he eventually found that it, that this vector was in R4. He didn't know why, but so. Um, in R8, well, these are the other algebras that we will use later. So in the octonions, the situation is even more complicated, so I cannot use just a diagram. But this is the, the table to use in case you're going to multiply. Mm -hmm. What is interesting in this table, which you find, well, you can see a copy of sin side and a copy of H. <coughs> and 
now, uh, it's very cold, <coughs> you pay a price when you move from the reals to the, to the, to the Kelly numbers. So H has uh, a product which is not commutative and the K number has a product neither commutative nor associated. <coughs> there are then extension of this algebras in some sense of uh, Clifford algebras can be considered as an extension of quaternion algebras, but not of the Ocon because Clifford algebras are not associated with the product. But they, uh, these are the only division algebras. This because uh, you can, you know, Clifford algebras in Sedanians and all the construction you can do <coughs> with the, this uh, Cayley Dixon process, okay, which every time you double the dimension, the dimension of the, of the set, you always have. So uh, I don't I don't want to repeat very much of the talk given by the Xana, but just to make this talk self contained, I will simply recall the notation. And this A is an ambiguous uh, symbol for C, oh, sorry, for H or for H and O. Okay? And uh, what we need is the definition of the sphere of imaginary units. And what we have to observe that any quaternion or any octonion, which is not real, but with some uh, uh, imaginary part, well, can be um, written as x plus yi with a suitable choice of x, y positive, and i, uh, I uh, imagine an imaginary unit. So this then, together with some semantic assumption of the domain, provides us the, the definition, in some sense, um, the, the tools for the definition. So a slice domain is a domain such that whenever you consider uh, a complex line to this form, that this intersects the domain in a, in a domain, okay? And it is uh, axially symmetric if, Whenever you have a point, you have also a high sphere. Okay. For example, the ball okay, centered on the reals is an example of the So the second condition could be somehow where you can complete. If you have a complex symmetric completion, you can add points at the moment. But the first condition is uh, oops. So these are the this is the definition of slice regularity. So you stick the function to, uh, to one of this complex line and you apply this differential equation, which is can be regarded as species mm -hmm. on this line. Uh, of course, uh, just, just a small remark, uh, the theory can be can have also a symmetric boundary part. We can consider those uh, Function with vanish of the other operator acting on the other, right? It's completely similar. So if you prefer this, because mm -hmm. I would say that. How many equations, equations of that? What do you mean? How many equations of that? Well, each for any for any r. So. What? <laughs> every time. Not every for time every imaginary you change unit. r, you see, this is it. For every r you have. Yeah, one. for every imaginary unit. Yes. Uh, we'll find that number generated. Oh. Right. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, you need, you need to move all the No, 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 no. Whole sphere. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, also, uh, Gautzen already uh, recalled this uh, derivation, uh, which works fine for slice level function only. And this is very useful sometimes. So if you remember that in the previous definition, so we have to wait, say, 70, 75 years from the letter of Marx at 65. Years. Sixty-five years from the last of Marx to have the to, regular, to, to have the future regular definition, which was before this, mm -hmm. and then another seventy years for this. One. So mm -hmm. it was a long process. But mm -hmm. in the case of, of future regular functions, well, this the, this derivative is not does not exist, so there is no notion of derivation. Mm -hmm. Well, this works and works fine. Mm -hmm. And this. The Cayley numbers at x to the n well defined without choosing a parenthesis? Without Exponential. Without using parentheses. No, I don't, I'm not using parentheses. Mm -hmm. here, here, here are my questions. For Cayley numbers 
is x to the n well defined without the x to the n. Yeah, the nth power. The nth power, yes. Is it well defined, yes. even though it's not associated? It's this alternative. You can always calculate it. What? This is an alternative algebra. Well, tell me what it means. Don't tell me the word. You can put this. Uh, and you can also have this. This works. So we make it. No. No, no, it's like this. X, Y. X, Y, X. X, Y, X. Yes, oh, yes, right. X, Y, X. Yes, of course, This is the minimal as well. But for instance, the why is it minimal? Why, is it, why are you using that much? That, that's more than X to the N being well defined. Yeah. No, no, but this is in some sense what um, a colleague of mine, uh, which um, I think called someone, Perotti and uh, and uh, Alessandro Milo. No, Riccardo Biloni and uh, Alessandro Biloni mm -hmm. uh, from the University of Trento, who was the standard in entire theory to general algebra. So this is the minimum request to have. So if the answer is for not what? You mean for what? For, for, for constructing this. this no, but what, what fact? For what fact? fact? Well, how would you? It is a bit technical, no? This, this construction goes back to the full um, We take an algebra which is alternative, uh, which is not necessarily associated but alternative, and you define a stem function. <coughs> and from the stem function, which is a function with some good properties of this. Uh, a complex of y and is it correct? Uh, and there is a notion, double notion of conjugacy. And so that's still so I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, what it, you can do is that they solve an equation uh, which eventually gives us uh, the same class of functions mm -hmm. when you see that has an algebra H or but you have to have associate, not associativity, but alternativity of the okay. So, uh, I'm sorry. So, how, well, this is a very nice characterization of slice slider functions. In fact, they are series function that can be analytic and this in the sense when, when they are defined at all. Uh, but can you do that? Mm -hmm. The notes. Oh, I see. Everything on the right. right. On the right. So we, we we made the choice at the beginning, but everything is can be have yeah. a have a point. Okay. Symmetric <laughs> counter. <laughs> <laughs> so and let, let me make the, okay. I, I don't want to. I, as I said, I don't want to repeat what I've already done. But, so let me make a uh, 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 a general consideration in H, which is easy to handle. In some sense, when you have two two quaternions. Uh, you consider the product. This is the product, well, the same, the same symbol, but unfortunately, I cannot find very many symbols. So this is the product between the two quaternions, this is the product between two real numbers. And this is here. Uh, sorry, this is the, the what we the imagined fact. It is to say the, oh, and then the notation here can see. Well, it's a, the back here is Q, Q arrow and W arrow, which means we are taking the Something very big, it's a scalar product, and then here we take also the vector, the product. So, in particular, assume that i and j are two imaginary units, though they don't have the real parts. Okay, mm -hmm. so the product reduces to this this is the real part of the product, and this is the imaginary part. So, i and j are without. I'm a bit cavalier about the notation, but I don't use the arrow. But I mean, 
I and G are in fact in, as considered in R3. Okay. So in particular, if I and J are orthogonal, then what we have is the following K is orthogonal to I and to J. Okay. And it is an imaginary unit. So we can try to uh, use this fact. Take I, we have a choice, freedom of choice for, for J, then I times J is K. But this is like the normal thing, because when you have I and J, K is always given as I times J. Mm -hmm. So it's a kind of preferred choice of the unit. And we express this value of the restriction, the, the restriction of the function F, Li as this combination in components. Okay, these are real combinations, the, uh, real value functions, okay. not the one and two and three. Okay. So I make this calculation, <coughs> apply the uh, operator d bar i, and this is the output. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, don't worry, I will copy this. Okay, mm -hmm. it's the same line, when after some simple manipulation you collect parts. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, this is say, real, this is the component <coughs> i, j, and k. Okay. Mm -hmm. What you observe is that if you take this function here, f, capital F is not plus i for 1, and g, f2 plus i for they satisfy, since we have this 0, mm -hmm. they satisfy Koshim Koshiri manipulation. So they are holomorphic. Mm -hmm. So this gives us a, an important tool we use several times, which is the split, so-called split level. So I show you just for the mm -hmm. case of the quaternions, but well, a similar mm -hmm. argument that Oops applies also for for elements. So you can split the restriction. And the, and the, in a paper in 2006, the Stupa, among other results, also proved. So in, the, in exactly the same way as in the, in the, in the one complex viral case. Mm -hmm. okay. This is because if you if you think a little bit of the proof, about the proof, you just need what the maximum principle. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, no, because well, you have analytic properties, so the functions are in fact defined. No, what? No, what? You have. Uh, so just say it again. I just. You have an ergodicity of functions which are slightly regular, and this is the only ingredient you need. You have a deriva derivation, everything is fine. Mm -hmm. You don't need any. You're going with power two, is that thing? Yes, you have power two. So, because I was in between the two, the two experts. Well, I uh, we try to, to work on a slice of, on a version of slice of regular for slice regular function of just random group in, in the case of mm -hmm. this. Well, of course, we couldn't have uh, very general results, but in fact, we could prove this version, which is exactly the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, we just use uh, tools like the splitting lemma zone, and at the time, we couldn't prove what was something natural to think of. Because if you have a function from the unit ball into itself, having two fixed points, mm -hmm. is it necessarily the identity? This is obvious. Mm -hmm. in one, in one, mm -hmm. uh, in one variable. Because we have what? We have Schwarz big lemma. Mm -hmm. We didn't have it. Mm -hmm. So recently, Stupato and Lee's in the Chinsa Gizem, and Topato, and so they have done mm -hmm. and improved these results. So they found uh, uh, version of the Schwarz big lemma, and they prove this also. The key thing. Okay. Okay. What is the, the main difficulties in working with this? Uh, well, the, the product, standard product of slice regular function does not preserve the value. Very simple example. So you take q minus a, which is regular to the square, or q minus a times q minus e. Well, this this may stop everything. So the mm -hmm. are not always on the right. Mm -hmm. And that's why, as Rezeta already pointed out, it was necess necessary to find the definition of multiplicity, which is regular. Mm -hmm. So we start from two, two power series expansions, and we obtain another spiral power series. Where the coefficient are calculated in this way and put on the right so that we are sure that the function 
the output is a regular time. It's nice. Mm -hmm. um, then we also introduce, well, they introduce actually, the notion of uh, regular conjugates, where the conjugation is taken only for this condition. It's so interesting. I, I don't understand this, but the physicists have this time ordering product where they artificially move factors across. This reminds me of that exactly. very much. Well, in fact, uh, 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 thank you for, for this comment. Integration uh, of the chain, no? We asked, you know, some experts in algebra in, 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 uh, in Italy, mm -hmm. what they normally do is they have a non commutative product. Mm -hmm. And they say, well, you normally put everything on one side mm -hmm. and make calculations. But it apparently is a, it's a, such a standard product in non commutative setting that they don't even use a different symbol in some books. Uh, well, this allows us to define a uh, serialization of function, and finally also a regular recipient, which is also important. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to well to say very much about this because it was already well. I want well come back to the, the my to write uh, comment on the complex numbers. In fact, well, I believe that since uh, the the, the uh, uh, Kelly numbers and the uh, Hamilton numbers are somehow an extension of well, fundamental. Instead, this is not true, and it's easy to see. Well, this is an example for any n of we don't know without rules. But this is not actually regular. So, tangent well, well, There's something on the wrong side there. So, it cancels. The real part is always positive, it's equal to 1. <coughs> so, you cannot have, you have a zero. <coughs> So then, uh, in, in a quite recent paper, Graziano and um, Daniele Struppa uh, show that any regular polynomial can be, in fact, factorized in this, in this um, blocks of terms of this form. These are the, <coughs> the blocks which contain the spherical zero that some spoke about. And these are. So after that, the wait, wait, what was that statement? You had a product down there, where and wait. so these are <coughs> all sitting on the same sphere. <coughs> so what's the statement? When while you and have and and, what's the and mean? Okay. I mean and expression where any <coughs> regular polynomial. That product polynomial of positive degree and using that product you have a Oh, it's a project of those yeah. and those. Mm -hmm. Yes, and those, yes. So this comes out in the following way. So if you have q minus, say, what is w? So you're you telling me that they are bar, sort of not necessarily roots. They are not necessarily roots. Mm -hmm. They are kind of roots. They are kind of roots, but they stay. This is the what Graziano uh, uh, called the Kamshapa. Kamshaft effect. Mm -hmm. So the roots are not this alpha q and alpha m, but they sit on the sphere yeah. of the root. Mm -hmm. quite an so there are roots on which the is even worse in the case of any numbers. Because <coughs> Can you give me a partition of the previous polynomial? Is that regular? The previous polynomial? No, this is not regular. No, it's, yeah. it's not regular. Which one? I'm sorry. This one is not regular because you see the well, otherwise it's, this is small. <laughs> no, it's because well this part is regular. <coughs> well, so to make the long story short, oh, let's say you have uh, yeah yeah yeah. So well, this is this. <coughs> This is the second, uh, uh, how to say, important conversation I had with uh, uh, in recent time. So we, uh, we uh, well, it is natural to look at what resembles the nebulous and the mm -hmm. Why? We have the reciprocal, and it is a regular. Mm -hmm. We were talking about something in the study. Sure. Uh, all this has been only the coterminants of this. All of this has been done only the coterminants. 
no, no, the, 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 well, it depends. Definition. Okay, okay, okay. Definition is, is, is about, uh, so yes, in fact, the proof is not, well, it's not some an original proof, but it is somehow a universal proof, an extension of a proof by God. Depends on a topological degree and, you know, the standard. Okay. Uh, well, some some good properties. We have said a slice regular fractional transformation acts transitively and bijection. What I observe here is the following: so they depend only on two on two parameters, like mm -hmm. in the case, I like in the one of a state. <coughs> I didn't want to enter the table, but this theory, which is in R four, essentially is one dimension. So, with the introduction of the tools we have. That is to say, the reciprocal and uh, the, the regular reciprocal and the product. Katerina Stott uh, developed a theory of poles in the art. So, 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 so there is no art of this phenomenon, nothing like this. Mm -hmm. Even though someone regards uh, regard H as a C times C, it's not like C2, it's something different. Okay? Mm -hmm. So we have two parameters here, yeah? and one parameter is A, and the other is U. U is a unitary R. So what I observe here is that if if U is like some miracle, or if you choose U to be on the same line of A, on the same complex line, mm -hmm. so this is this is a function which maps the complex line L I A into itself. Mm -hmm. It's like in the complex plane. Mm -hmm. You restrict the function, and you are on the, that slice. And this is quite a, a an interesting observation, not only for for Mabius transformations, but in general. So assume that you have uh, power series whose coefficient belong, all belong to the same LR. Then it is clear that when you restrict the function to a LI, yeah, this LI is mapping to itself. But what is uh, uh, also clear is that if all the coefficients are real, so if this property is, is valid for n slots. <laughs> but what's less clear is that, well, this property is somehow special. Because if you allow to have few, say, self slices, mm -hmm. necessarily the coefficients are all real. So either you have one privileged slice, or you have all slices. Mm -hmm. But the case of real coefficients is not very interesting because, of course, it's like the other one. But the other is interesting. And well, I. I don't want to say very much, but well, this this class of function deserves some some definitely deserves some 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 studies. Uh, I I try to to resemble a version of the Wolf lemma something like this because in here we can iterate quite easily. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's a bit difficult. But still, what is the one? Can you iterate? Pardon? Can you iterate? Well, <coughs> since this is a, a copy of C, you have all the. On C, you can do Yes. But th those are not slides for regular. Right? Mm -hmm. In particular, for these functions, this is an interesting property. So the zero set, which consists of points isolated in our sphere, well, it, the, the isolated points all lie on the same. in the in the slides, the blue slides. Mm -hmm. This. <coughs> As important consequences. Well, in general, when you look for a, uh, a solution like this, you are looking for a fixed point, right? Fixed points are very important in, in all mathematics. What is interesting in our in our setting is that this function here, f q minus q, as a function, is still regular. Whatever f is, if regular, if f is regular, f q minus q is regular. So we know that these zeros are singular. So isolated points or spheres. So <clears throat> we, as it is natural to do, we started studying the simple cases and we studied the <coughs> fixed points of the major transformations. And this consists of at most two points, or of a sphere of points. <coughs> okay. And here is some, well, quite an exercise, but just to make you feel the flavor as you have to work. So this is, well, computation. Then you observe the case zero, then necessarily this is zero is the only fixed point, and this is known. 
band, we collect all the stuff. What we have here, you see, is something different from the complex way. Uh, a polynomial of degree 3. Why? Because we have this regular sequel problem. Mm -hmm. So, in principle, you can have three fixed points. Why should I, uh, well, well, first of all, why I'm sure that there are fixed points? Because I have the fundamental theorem of algebra, which helps me a lot. Otherwise, in principle, I would say, oh, well, it can be none. Mm -hmm. I use this factorization statement. And I assume that AI and AB, so it could be also one conjugate of the other, so that I have also the blocks of degree uh, 2. And when comparing the coefficients, I have this and this. So that the second condition together with the first implies that the product of the modules of the root, these are not roots, only this is the root, these are not roots. So, mm -hmm. As an S observer, they, they are on the same. The same uh, sphere. So, in some sense, it doesn't really matter to know exactly where it is, but just the module. So, when I have this, well, like I said, no, I'm not all uh, alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3, as modules as more than that. So, <coughs> in particular, what we, can, we have this proposition for the case of uh, slice preserving maybe transformation, and it's more precise. And, well, to finish, I have to say that, well, Looking in the literature, it was very little about creation of quaternary functions, and probably this is considered one of the best results. And it is a quite a desperate, uh, <laughs> it's a very nice paper, mm -hmm. it collects a lot of information, uh, the historical surveys of quaternary functions. But in some sense, there is it's very much a class of function for which some iterate, iteration theory can be done. So it's very mm -hmm. this is, And this is because they can write it in terms of a, a matrix. <laughs> but uh, great big uh, missing point in the theory is slice regularity is not preserved under composition. And we're still uh, looking for uh, uh, say, uh, something which can be replaced with uh, can replace the composition. Something. One might wonder, in fact, this is normally one of the questions. It's never preserved, I mean, some simple claim case so a very simple example show me the, the opposite take this, this and any polynomial you want compose that this is on one side it is easy to see that this is regular but the other is not so the job is even a simple example but normally people say well why don't you use the, the Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The start order to plug in the function and replace everything. Well, you can do this, but the output is that the composition in general is not associated with becoming a mass. You have to say that this is a good person and that. So it's not unsatisfactory, but it can be a condition. Mm -hmm. To have an out. Well, uh, honestly wait, speaking. Wait, wait, wait. The star multiplication is associated, right? Pardon? Star multiplication is associated. Yes, it is. The composition. It's the composition. The associative, no, I mean, this ballot, okay, is not guaranteed to be associative. You see what I mean? This. Who wants to use this idea? Oh, oh. This is not, can be. Okay. It's alternative, it's alternative. No, I don't understand any of these statements. You don't, it's, you try to compose, but you do it just like formally, putting the series okay. inside the other series. If you simply substitute, okay? Oh, substitute one series. Okay. Use both Maybe substitution, Maybe substitution is a term if you have to use the superposition. Mm -hmm. But if you substitute, in, in one sense, this function here, and this function here, well, this gives you this. But if you first G, sorry, G composed where? Standard one. Is this and this is regular, but the other side, so this is not regular, right? But it, well, it, what does this other thing say? Unfortunately, regular composition, this, oh, regular composition, this one, this, so this symbol. last sentence, unfortunately, what does that say? Unfortunately, because yeah. <laughs> we're not happy. No, no, what is the math statement asserting? No, it's I not a statement, it's just an observation. No, I don't understand the observation. That for you to do the series is not a social. This, this what, regular composition? I call it this uh, regular composition. So it's, 
Is that open? Okay, you have two power series. Oh, right? well, he, well, dot is. Dot is the find out like this. Instead of Q here, I put F of Q times N, but in, in the in the regular product sense. Okay? But the output is oh. not. Oh. It's still regular. It's still regular, but. Okay? Did okay. I answer your question? <laughs> so you're kind of saying if you have an associative algebra and formal power series over it, and then you. Substitute is not associated. Well, in general, you cannot even substitute. In general, I think that the, well, you have to be very careful. Well, you collect terms. I mean, you just power series and you collect terms. Then it's the same problem. You have to calculate first and then. Yes, then this is the same problem. Mm -hmm. This is a, this is sorry. It's Q. No. Uh, I, I, I Q. I same problem. This is not a value. This is a the Q is a variable, okay? and this is a variable here as well. Mm -hmm. So you first obtain something, but you, thank you for, for pointing out this. What you can always do if you have a self map, you consider orbits. This can be done. Okay. So in particular, in fact, in this uh, already cited paper, they started that this extension of the addition of quadratic functions. And, and I discovered, well, they also defined this model set, and I discovered that Alberto has a result on this. I'm mm -hmm. very much impressed with this. Also in this, in this field, mm -hmm. this is it us, so I'm happy. Um, what I can do, well, now we have also some help from the numerical simulation. Mm -hmm. What I can do is that most of the previously known result can have an interpretation in terms of slice regular functions. These functions here, in fact, when you change, well, the, first of all, they are regular, slice regular in the whole sense. <laughs> and secondly, these are somehow the special functions. So it's a regular function because when you move C, well, <laughs> in the consideration of the, the slice which contains C, you are in a, in a very good position because this is the primitive, this is the primitive slice. Mm -hmm. So, so I hope that this will provide a mm -hmm. new instrument, a new insight to have good. Uh, <laughs> Developments of the theory, but I have to say that some questions are still open. And primarily, what I cannot see easy to obtain is a linearization process. You know, the function types are not in the dynamics. So you have a pro you have a fixed point, and you study locally what happens. So this cannot be done if you don't have a proper composition. Okay, normally you use uh, interplanar math. Okay, so just continue. It's time to do this. Uh, so recently, I was I was uh, somehow opted in one, one of the projects of Alberto and other collaborators. I'm very happy for this. Uh, I have no results for that. Oh, we have partial results. Have. Yeah, but so <laughs> this work uh, is still in progress, and I uh, hope that in the next future uh, we have also some results. So definitely before next. <laughs> okay. One year we have Thank you. Are there any questions? Yeah, you it, it, I mean, suppose you want to prove the the Schoenfeld's theorem. I mean, one question: Are is Montel's theorem true? You know, normal families, normal families, or? Because it's just slice, you know, it should be true because for each slice you have Montel. Yeah, but you see, the slice is not self self contained. So ah. It's not mapping to itself. Mm -hmm. No, no, but I mean, I want to prove, I mean, suppose I want to prove the. You have a normal family and you want. You have mass from the, from the disk to the disk, regular, regular. So they are equicontinuous and equicontinuous. Yeah, that's the, yeah. So the limit is a, a quasi-regular function, or no? No. It's a, it's a compact family. Uh, uh, well, that's a good point. I, I, so it yeah, should true. be true. I asked it this year yesterday. It's easier to limit yeah. quasi-regular functions. Ah, it's it's quasi-regular. I was it told. It is. Yes. Yeah, I think it's true. Uh, yes, yeah, but uh, the limit is our, our compact set, right? So the uniform limit. 
it should be true, no? Should be I was told yesterday. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, true, yeah. no? Not so only Hurwitz. Eh? Hurwitz. And also Hurwitz theory. Yes, yes, yes. It's either it's either either injective or constant. For any, for any else, yeah, because then, for instance, you you could take a in a uh, yes, a, a, a region <laughs> bounded by a smooth sphere, a street, and then you take the the maps quasi regular that maximize the norm at one point. And that's, uh, you know, like I want to put the Perron theorem, it makes sense, no? no, no. Hey, okay, consider the, the set of four quasi regular maps from uh, around this, around ball, around ball, to something yeah. there, which are quasi regular. There are many, like uh, homo, homo, homothetic, homothetic, well, okay, that are, uh, that are uh, uh, free, yeah, I mean, a, a homothetic transformation is, is, uh, is uh, means you mean a dilation like this? Yeah, I mean, no, I mean, it's not empty. The set of maps that are regular in that sense, mm -hmm. in your sense, that take one point to another, is uh, it's not empty, no? Right, they, they are open. Points. Yeah, it's an open. Well, yeah, now right. you take the one that maximizes the derivative at one point. What's the what the purpose of that? Mm -hmm. You know, I want to prove Riemann mapping theorem. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah, as I said, well, some of the tools that require uh, probably false. Huh? Pro pro probably the doesn't the work. Yeah. But, it, but it's a dream. I mean, it's a dream. Okay. No, only, only a dream. Thing. Uh, what we know is for the uh, mapping theory. What we know is that uh, it, you cannot use the approach of the logarithm. Ah, Not you can use the logarithm. Ah, okay. okay. So the limit exists, but you don't know whether it's uh, exactly. answer. Ah, okay. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. There is this. I wanted to make a comment. Yes. I just wanted to say, uh, you know, when you think of complex functions, I guess they considered them for a long time before they composed them. I think they only composed them before the end. Well, they were thinking of them as functions. Yes. You know going from here to there, right? They didn't compose them for a long time. Now, 100 years later, we're at function theory and we compose them without thinking about it. But there must be some non-trivial reason, I'm gonna go back and think about it, that this is kind of why you can compose, because you, in this larger setting, you cannot compose, right? You yeah, cannot there compose. is some hope that you can. No, no, you cannot compose you say, the say, set theory function. Yeah, okay. right. But for complex analytics, you can, although that wasn't done at the beginning. So, so maybe, what I was thinking is, maybe you really shouldn't try, because you can. So in other words, you should think of these functions as being more like a module. They're not operators. They're, they're yeah. like differential forms or something. They're objects. Objects. Like a module, and then you can bring other machines up next to them. But like, you know, maybe you should like before they started like the, the way they considered holomorphic functions before they started composed. I mean, it's it's sort of a strange thing about uh, say power series functions. I think that they had also this background which helps a lot. In our case, they cannot use. In a non commutative set, this is not good. Right. So, so the, the power theory, the theory of power theory of functions, the theorem of power theory of functions. What? I have, I, have, I have the feeling that in the past, the idea of function was very much different from the idea of power theory. Well. The idea of function yeah. was completely different. They, they called it, uh, also for the, for the real function, mm -hmm. they expressed them as super polynomials in the sense that they said. Mm -hmm. Polynomial arithmetic terms, so they calculate the terms. That's what is another point of view. But they, say, to this century, the last century, it was not normal to think of a function as a law which associates one thing with something else. Mm -hmm. it's, it's more like an operator, so it's something you can calculate if you want, if you're able to. Yeah. In fact, they develop a lot of very mm -hmm. good uh, techniques. <coughs> so I'm, I'm not sure. Well, to be honest, I, I, I made an attempt. Well, this is a real talk about this. But I remember 
So what it is sufficient to observe is that there is a relation when you have in the, in the chain rule huh, of the coefficients of, of the expansions of the different components of the three functions. This is far product there. Yeah. 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 No, the product is okay. The product is Leibniz rule works fine. But if you have a composition chain in the chain rule, chain rule. For which which circle means? Composition, right? Of set theoretic masses. Yes. But we're well, working with the root derivation. So we, we need to have some regular. But in the chain rule, yes. what occurs is the derivative of the function and the derivative of the composite. So the function is not calculated but not the whole. This is the standard in a so Fadi Bruno formula, something like this. Fadi very Bruno. general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, which involves that polynomial. So recently in the end of the nineties, a German guy uh, found a non-commutative version of that polynomial. So theoretically, one possibility is the following. You describe coefficients and you reconstruct the function. But it's very difficult to handle. So, the, so if you're familiar with special polynomials, they are not easy to calculate. In fact, they were not easy. They were not calculated at this certain point. And in this and this and this uh, paper, they also find a way to accelerate calculation. But it is a um, it's a procedure which requires it's an inductive procedure. So every, every time you have uh, the that polynomial to the n, you have to uh, you can't calculate the n at the n. That the of the DMs. And then you have to substitute it for. But this is another possibility. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, you miss all the, 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 simple, the simple facts, okay? Mm -hmm. That you simply plug in and you obtain. For easy examples, everything works fine, but in some sense, the easy examples are committed. <coughs> this, is, this is an answer, this is the best I can. I think it's going to work. Thank you for the question. <laughs> <coughs> well, just a uh, kind of a silly thing just to see, you see, would be to, uh, you see they have this, uh, no, no, it's coming back to Alberta. Yes. Mm -hmm. So they do in the computer, now they uh, uh, do this conformal mapping in the computer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And here you could just press on and, uh, That's it, yeah. and see what In fact, this was uh, one of them. Mm -hmm. That's it. On the output of this question. No, but for the remote mapping thing, you don't know. Oh, yeah. Log, but you just press on and it. Well, this much is not necessarily yeah, yeah. conformal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. No, but, yeah, but still, the map that realizes the maximum norm is interesting, mm -hmm. even if it's not onto. <coughs> it's interesting. Yeah. But, but in any the computer, it's what is it for onto? Mm -hmm. Even if the logarithm doesn't work, I don't know, honestly. it's a beautiful map. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. No, what was funny is that this guy is working on this uh, simulation, yeah, yeah, yeah. simulation yeah. actually yeah. discovered that there was this yeah, yeah, yeah. actually yeah. symmetric properties of the sets, the zero sets yeah. and such. Yeah. Can you tell me why this uh, is it a well, I, uh, I look at the map they were working with and I said, well, it's clear why. Because these are regular functions. So the zero set is like always like this. Of course, there are some, some errors in calculations, you know, and they had instead of points, they had some small balls, but either small balls, or which, which is what we expected to have, but they were somehow surprising. Uh, well, thank you for the suggestions. Any other questions? Let us thank the speaker again. <laughs> Since we're running a little late, maybe we'll come back in 15 minutes.